So we'll just uh, go into the wrap up and um, any remaining questions on any of the topics uh, we'll just address uh, at the end. So you all should be seeing the slide title wrap up. Yes. Well, thank you. Uh, so a quick summary, uh, let's go over these points. The teacher of record should be reported. Substitute should only be reported for vacant positions. All staff must have a staff demographic record uh, to be submitted every year so that you, if for uh, no other reason, you're updating the service years. Um, staff without seeds that should be reported. Again, uh, these may be your uh, ROP uh, staff or maybe your charter school staff, maybe administrators at charter schools without seeds. Um, you have your, you know, your human resources, the administration, maybe you can get assistance from your COE. Uh, contact the CTC directly, however you do it. Uh, you want to get a certificate of clearance for these staff members. Um, staff assignments are reported by school and by job classification. So Kyron described that. Uh, student course data should be submitted for all students, uh, kindergarten through 12th grade, enrolled on census day, uh, primary enrollments. However, uh, we would also like the data for your secondary and short-term enrollments. The only exclusion is enrollment status 50. Do not submit any uh, student course enrollment records for them. English uh, learner students must be enrolled in at least one course section where education service code is populated to show they are receiving or not receiving services, okay? Um, if the invent, if there's a situation in which you have an EL student and they are not receiving services, populate the course code with the five. Uh, you just don't omit it. If you have English learners in your district, even a single one, you're gonna have to populate their course, uh, the education service code field. Um, your PSTS data should only be for your CTE completers. Um, your special uh, ed students who have a post-secondary survey are is reported in end of year four. And then students may have uh, one or more post-secondary outcome. Um, and vendors have been modifying their systems to accommodate that. If your vendor does not allow you to submit more than one post-secondary uh, outcome for a student, you can always log into CalPEDS and use the user interface to add additional outcomes. Um, so just be aware of the methods of support. We always suggest using uh, the support form. However, email and phone numbers are available just to slower response time, just because of the way uh, that request gets to us. And then the CSIS listserv is a great tool to talk to other users. If you have any kind of question, um, certainly we can advise you on the policies and procedures in CalPads, but ultimately putting it together in addition to your student information systems, in addition to local practices, uh, your peers are better off uh, helping you with that. Um, and then resources, uh, you signed up for this training, so you know there's Bridge. Uh, if you wanna get the PowerPoints, additional documents, Bridge is great for that. Um, the YouTube channel is growing, is, uh, it's becoming better and better. Marshall and Slyman do a lot of work to uh, add content and to maintain it. Speaking of Bridge, um, Brandy is doing a CDE webinar and they've enlisted the services of Marshall and perhaps Slyman is assisting Marshall. Uh, they're gonna be hosting the webinar because the registration is closed uh, live on Zoom, uh, on YouTube. So we'll let Marshall talk about that in a, a little bit. Um, he'll tell you how to find it and kind of show you what to expect on the day of. Uh, the CalPAD user manual is growing. Again, Kyron showed you uh, that errors have been added and the video content from YouTube is being put there as we develop it. So that's uh, hopefully a, a better resource than what we've provided in years past. Um, then there's a lot of manuals uh, for fall two regarding um, like the that little slide with the uh, core courses that was described in the uh, administrator's manual from the CTC. Uh, there's um, credentialing information. So um, if you want to educate yourself, that's a good resource. And then Brandy's Padlet from last year. Um, a lot of the changes from previous years that began last year are explained in documents in the Padlet. Just be aware this is old. It's older information. So um, 
You may not need it, but it it's the best consolidation of different resources related to fall two reporting. Um, and then uh, this survey, Martha asked us why we didn't have any surveys yesterday. And I said, you guys were all, you know, kind of tired, you know, but I do want to solicit uh, your survey. You know, I'm standing on a corner with my hand out. Please submit the survey. Uh, if it's good, bad, indifferent, whatever, uh, it kind of keeps our director off our bat. Thank you, Beth. I, we, I can speak for all the trainers. I appreciate it. Um, we do actually use the surveys. We have to review them. If you have any concerns, suggestions, please do take the time to do a survey. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, Marshall, if you want to take over and kind of show them where they can uh, access the um, the live stream. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and take over control here. I'm going to stop the sharing first, and then I'm going to try to share out my secondary screen. As you see on the screen, let me know if you see it. Okay, when you come to the YouTube channel. What he was particularly talking about was uh, with the webinar. In this area right here, you're going to find, you know, it's going to say live. You're going to find that webinar. And it's a way that you can get the content and uh, see what's going on. Uh, so look for it here like that. And also here at 3 o'clock on Wednesdays, you have the CalPads weekly update here. And I try to keep at least two, maybe three, so you can go back four. But the, what I wanted to bring to your attention is it comes up like that. Sometimes scroll down, you'll see this intent area right there where it says show more. When you click show more, I've gone through and try to pick out some of the stuff that's, you know, relative or a lot of questions been asked. I try to pick it out so that you can just go to this area here and find like changes for the changes for fall fall two. You just click on that right there. And when you click on that, it will automatically start start playing there for you like that. Uh, Connie, there there is a little bit of a change. Just like that. That's one one other area that I want to bring to your attention. I'm trying not to take all the time real quick. Uh, these three ellipses here, if you click on that three ellipses and you'll see where it says open live transcript. Once you hit open live transcript, you got a transcript of everything that's been said in the trainings is located here. You can also use on your keyboard control F key and do a search for, you know, relative information. All right. Thank you all. Thank you, Marshall.